How great, how how great, how great you stand. How great, sing with me. And how great, how great, how great is our God. How great, how great, how great, how great, how great, how great, how great is our God. How great, how great. This is Rev. Michelle Mann. Genesis 10 deals with some of the descendants of Noah. If we were to read merely the names without expressing the deeper Hebraic meaning, this chapter would not only be very dull indeed, but would fail to communicate to the non-Hebrew reader the depth of meaning and the very many truths of their astounding prophetic relevances. The additional Hebrew meanings will be prefaced by the word meaning and shown highlighted in double brackets to emphasize their supplementary nature to the actual original biblical text. Genesis 10 Now these are the male descendants of the sons of Noah. Shem, meaning name, or fame, often prefacing or standing in the place of representation of the name of Yahweh. It is imperative to note that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, was a direct descendant of Shem. Ham, meaning good looks, and Japheth, meaning warm heart. As brought forth they to them male descendants after the deluge. The male descendants of Japheth. Gomer, meaning to complete. And Magog, meaning rooftop, the highest point of an edifice on which things can take place, usually to do with idolatrous worship. And Madia, meaning to establish distance from the center. And Yavan, meaning ancestor of the Greek people. And Tubal, meaning to bring, to carry, to lead, to conduct. And Meshech, meaning long, tall, or drawn out by force. And Tiras, meaning desire. Now the male descendants of Gomer, meaning to complete. Ashkenaz, meaning to sprinkle as with fire and rephoth, meaning to heal with dried fruit or herbs, and togarma, meaning to save or lay aside for myself by breaking bones or strength. Now the male descendants of Yavan, meaning ancestor of the Greek people, Elisha, meaning God is, and Tarshish, meaning great wealth and opulence, elegance like alabaster for the tabernacle. The descendants of Kiti, the Kitim, meaning to beat or hammer, and the descendants of Dodan, the Dodanim, meaning leaders. From these they separated at this time, so from hence come all foreign nations of the lands of them, mankind, according to the languages of them, by families of them to nations of them. Now the male descendants of Ham, meaning good looks.
Cush, meaning perhaps, as if he were weak. The prophet Jeremiah rhetorically asks, Can the Cushite change his skin? in Jeremiah 13.23, which may or may not suggest that the Cushites were known for being black or of an unusual color. And Mitzraim, meaning Egypt, and Put, meaning foreign archers, and Canaan, or Canaan, meaning brought low into subjection. Now the male descendants of Cush, meaning as if he were weak. Seba, meaning he drank wine. And all the people, all the descendants of Hatvila, meaning languishing village or exhausted revelation. And all the descendants of Sabta, meaning to turn around, to turn toward, or turn on someone aggressively. And all the people of Ra'ama, meaning to thunder, as well as Sabteka, meaning to turn around, to turn toward, turn on someone aggressively, or beating, or in depression. Now the sons of Ra'ama, meaning to thunder, Sheba, or Sheba, meaning seven, or oath, and Dedan, meaning leading forward, for example, a great increase in family, from Cush, meaning as if he were weak, Remembering that Jeremiah rhetorically asks, Can the Cushite change his skin? Keynoting a differing color from others. From Cush, his lineage, came the infamous Nimrod, meaning rebel, having a relation to the Babylonian god Marduk or the star god Namra Udu, demonic enlightenment. Nimrod, who sank into depravity by becoming altogether tyrannical in the land. He maintained a tyrannical justice in the face of Yahweh, about which it is said as Nimrod, the tyrant judge in the face of Yahweh. As it came to pass, it became the first kingdom at that time known as Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalne, in the land of Shinar. Out of the land of which he went forth, Asher, meaning walking the straight path, happy and righteous. In time, he builds the city of Nineveh, as well as the city of Rehoboth, and the city of Kelach, and the city of Rezain, between Nineveh and between Kalach, known as the Great City. From Mitzraim, meaning double straits, double stronghold, or double fortress, his lineage came these, the descendants of Lud, meaning from whence comes Lydia, and Anamim, meaning subjugate the fountains of the waters to a place. And Lehabim, meaning flaming, scorching heat. And his descendants and the tribe of Neftuhim, meaning openers or engravers. And the people of Pathrus, Pathrusim, meaning Pathrosis, the southland of Egypt. And those of Kasluhim, meaning are the fools forgiven who worship gods of constellations, Kasluhim, who went forth from there. The people of Pelishti, Philistines or Palestinians, meaning ones of Palestine, land of wanderers. 
Now I will share some telling information regarding this name at the end of Genesis 10. And those people of Kaftor, meaning seek to atone or purge to attain rightful freedom. Now Canaan, or Canaan, meaning brought low into subjection. He fathered Sidon, or Sidon, meaning the hoarding huntsman's fortress, his firstborn. After that, his son Heth, meaning in dread he doth deplete utterly. And those Yebus, or Jebus, the Jebusites, meaning trodden underfoot, the people of Amor, the Amorites, meaning to utter, as well as the descendants of Girgash, the Girgashites, meaning to stir up strife, strike terror into, violent thief, and those of Hev, the Hevites, meaning tent dwellers, and Archi, the Archites, meaning gnawers, fugitive, and those of Sin, the Sinites, meaning dwellers in a marshy land, along with those people of Arvad, the Arvadites, meaning restless wanderer or fugitive, and of Tzamar, the Tzamarites, meaning to gnaw the teeth in nagging anguish, and the descendants of Hamath, the Hamathites, meaning fortress. Likewise, after this time, were scattered they families of Canaan, the Canaanites, meaning humbled. In time, this became the territory of the Canaanites or Canaanites from Sidon, extending their abode to Gerer's vicinity as far as Gaza reaches, came they toward Sodom and Gomorrah as well as Adma. These sons of Ham, according to their families and according to their languages, into these lands taken by them, becoming nations of them. Samech, ponder to comprehend these things. Now of Shem's descendants. Altogether, he fathered all the descendants of Eber, meaning he passed over. Shem, brother of Japheth the Great. Male descendants of Shem, meaning name or fame. Elam, meaning hidden time, eternity, young man, always. And Ashur, meaning to go straight on, a level plain. And Arpakshad, meaning boundary of the Chaldeans, possibly meaning comes as a light, to snatch like a lion, with a curse to drink from the vial, the trickle from the sacrificial bosom, the object of child sacrifice, or a demon. And lut, meaning beget, or bring forth. And aram, meaning high, elevated. Male descendants of aram, us, meaning counsel, contemplation, and hul, meaning writhing in agony, and gether, meaning circle of the winepress, and mash, meaning drawn out as long or tall. Now Arpakshad, meaning the object of child sacrifice or a demon, he fathered a son, Shelah, meaning prosperity. Then Shelah, he fathered son Eber, meaning he who passed over. Then to Eber were born two sons, the name of the first, Peleg, meaning a dividing by waters, because during his days began the splitting of the lands of the earth. And the name of his brother was Yoktan, meaning small, younger, insignificant. Now Yoktan's male descendants included Almadad, meaning how God loves, 
and shelef, meaning drawn out as from a group, and hazer maveth, meaning village of death or court of death, and yera, the Arab patriarch, meaning whiteness like the moon, and hadaram, meaning exalted glory, and yuzal, meaning take off, vanish, or going to and fro, and tikla, meaning date tree or palm, and obal, meaning bare, no clouds or clear skies, and abimael, meaning my father is God, and sheba, meaning to swear an oath or seven, and Ophir, meaning doubly fruitful, and Havila, meaning writhing in circular motion, languishing village, and Yobab, meaning crying out shrilly. All of these male descendants of Yoktan, meaning small, younger, insignificant, in time becomes a dwelling for them from Mesha in Arabah, extending towards Safar, the mountain of the east and these male descendants of Shem, according to their families, according to their languages, resided in their own lands, becoming their own nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, according to their genealogical annals, divided by their peoples. And from these were dispersed they, the nations of the earth after the deluge. Speak these things. This is the end of Genesis 10. To note, the etymology and definitions of names were derived from abarimpublications.com. The address is shown below. The name Palestine in the Bible. In Hebrew, the name Palestine and the name Philistine are pretty much the same. And Philistine literally means one of Palestine. The Philistines are descendants of Kesluhim, who were sons of Mizraim, son of Ham, son of Noah. The Philistines are those living in Palestine, or Palestinians. Palestine being the land of wanderers. This is Rev. Michelle Mann. Thank you for watching, and God bless you. Our God.